right, we are here in my outdoor worm bin. And the last time we were in here, we looked at some ways to cool down your bin. It's summertime. And when you put a lot of food in, a lot of times the worm bin can heat up. But this time we are going to do a really cool experiment. I have an aloe plant and I want to see if the worms will go through aloe and turn it into castings. But first, let's go ahead and dig in and see how they did with our last feeding. Now, our last feeding, I know we had some avocado shells. We had some banana peels and lots of fruits and vegetables. And we also had some toilet paper rolls. So we'll see how those are doing. And they've got into some of them. We've been putting whole ones in the last couple of times. And I thought I saw a black soldier fly larvae. Yep, here's one right here. I occasionally will find these in there and these are also good composters but they turn most of the compost into uh, their own weight so your compost goes down pretty far and some people grow them to feed their chickens etc so we'll go ahead and leave that in there i really don't have a problem with them overrunning my bin so i'm not too worried about them let's go ahead and break this open for them and again it looks like they've kind of infiltrated the edges so we'll try and remember to put that back in the center here's an avocado pit not quite soft enough for me to burst. Let's go ahead and dig in and see if they've taken care of the whole thing. And if you look, there's just, there's worms all throughout in every handful. I estimate I have somewhere between five and 6,000 worms in here. So I expect to see lots and lots. Unless there's some food that was left over, we may not see a worm ball. Here's a little piece of watermelon that I had been using frozen about every couple days I was putting frozen watermelon on top to keep the bin cool in addition to some ice so here's probably one of the later ones I put in here is a mango seed and let's see they've gotten everything out the cotyledon and everything inside there and they're just kind of working the edges it's getting softer and softer I'm definitely feeling that and here is an avocado shell so They've eaten all the flesh inside, and then they're slowly breaking down. That sticker right there, they'll eat all around that, and eventually I'll just be able to pull that sticker out without having to worry about it too much. All right, let's keep going around the edges. And sometimes I find them on the edges more so because I think it's a little bit cooler. But yeah, right there, you just see all kinds of red wigglers, all different sizes. Really good showing. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and whip through this so that we can get to the experiment. But real quick, let's look at this avocado shell. It's almost like they make a little hotel out of it. And sure enough, look at that little, little avocado Airbnb right there. All kinds of worms. I almost think like they go there to breed. And then inside there is actually some of the cardboard shredding. Now we put a lot of bedding in. I was putting layer after layer because lately I've been trying to bulk this bin up because the volume was getting so far down because I kept harvesting castings after castings and I treat this like a continuous flow bin. So the last three weeks, the last free three feedings, I have not harvested any castings. So as you can probably see, oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> right there next to, it looks like another piece of watermelon. Just a ton of worms. So let me go ahead and dig through. This right here looks like an apple. I think there's still some flesh of whatever this was, but I think it may have been an apple. So they're still attacking that. <laughs> Look at all those worms, I love it. All right, so as I'm going through here, I'm kind of using a bunch of my senses, kind of looking around and seeing how the worms are doing health-wise. I'm also using my nose to smell any kind of ammonia smells or fermentation, which just means that Maybe the bin is turning into a, a different direction than we need it to. Ammonia in particular, that just means that things are going anaerobic. The nitrogen is trying to find its best place, and that is ammonia, which is why you can uh, sometimes smell ammonia in a worm bin. And that's an indicator of overfeeding and uh, too much moisture. And that is a real problem for the, the worms, in fact. If you're starting to smell ammonia, then you really need to change something in your bin pretty darn quick. So I've put a little hole here and that's where we're gonna put our feeding zone. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So first thing I always like to start with some fresh bedding and this is just cardboard shreds. I had a bunch more of that. And I actually have a soil paper towel I'm gonna put on there. And then what I had in mind for our feeding slash experiment today is putting in some aloe leaves. 
These are for my plant. I just cut them from the base and then cut the ends off. This one I froze and I put a little cut down the center of it to give easy access to the worms. And this one I just recently cut off and I'm gonna put a cut right through here. Now, as soon as you get through the leaf, it's really easy to cut all the way through. And aloe is used a lot for skin care or for uh, sunburns. And it actually has some natural root hormone in it, so it promotes root development. So a lot of people use it in their um, different fertilizers or even within a worm tea. So I'm just wondering, is a worm going to get in there and get that? And I've also read that they can, um, you know, in some of the remedies, help with parasites, that kind of thing. So that brings me to an interesting point. So we've got earthworms that are worms, and we've got flatworms, which are kind of your parasitic worms. But those two types of worms are even more different than like humans and reptiles. They are in a whole different phylum. So if you think of kingdom phylum, class, order, family, genus, species, flatworms and earthworms are both in the kingdom Animalia, but earthworms are in the phylum Annelida, and flatworms are in the phylum Nematoda. So totally different types of creatures to begin with. One, the earthworm, ingests through its mouth and out through its anus, but the flatworm eats through the same and poops through the same hole. So in and out through the same hole. So anyway, the whole point of that little science lesson was to tell you that they're completely different. So I'm not thinking I'm going to be poisoning my earthworms with this aloe, but we'll kind of put this over here just in case they've got plenty of room to go somewhere else if they don't like it. But I'm also going to put some regular food in. So we'll give them some of their favorites, some banana peels, apple, some a tomato here, it's frozen. Let's see if I can, yep, got the skin open. Some more apples and strawberry, and then some lettuce and broccoli. So when we come in here, we'll know that the frozen was to the outside, the fresh was to the middle, and then we have our regular food scraps. So we'll just go ahead and go in with our amendments, and this is just pulverized oats. I'm gonna lightly put this on top. And then I've got some spent coffee grounds, and these are just our morning coffee and tea. Put those on it's just another good food source for them and then finally i'll add some pulverized eggshells which is just grit for their digestion they use it to grind up their food kind of like a bird and then finally i'm going to add some more bedding over the top now since we're in the summertime in a day or two i'm going to check the heat and make sure everything's not heating up and if it is i'll put some frozen water bottles on here or even some ice and that will help keep things cool and after about three or four days everything should be at a good temperature and if it is too warm for them, the worms can always get to the side because this bin is big enough for that. All right, so let's go ahead and bury this up. This is my outdoor worm bin. I've got a couple other very different bins. I've got a Vermihut worm tower, and that I run a lot differently from this. And I've got a tiny worm bin. So if you have fewer worms, then that's kind of the worm bin. That would be a good example for you. It only has 600. This one has about 6,000. And my worm tower has about 4,000. I really like that worm tower for a beginner bin. You really don't have to worry about moisture because the tower helps to keep the moisture just right. So I think that will do it. I hope everybody is having a great day. Hope your warm bins are going well. So happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.